What's good, SML? You know what time it is. Um, it's the end of the regular season. The primer posse has already botched their games. That means it's SML playoff time, and that means it's heat check time. Bomber, how are we doing today? Oh, I'm ready. I got about uh, an hour, two hours, just under two hours till I play meets. So I'm going to try and get this knocked out real quick. Yeah, and that's that's the cool thing about this year. I mean, you and I, despite a rocky season last season and a rocky season this season, back in our rightful spots in the SML playoffs. Yeah, it feels good to be back. That last one was a, a really long postseason, it felt like. so. Uh, yeah, nice it's, to, it's nice a long be break. I've been mentally preparing for it for about 10 weeks, and then, uh, and then the EA gods look down favorably upon me, so we will take it. Yeah, yeah, uh, everything kind of... Uh kind of fell the way it needed to i think you needed what two of three things to happen and all three happened so uh, i needed two of three things in the last week and i think i needed 15 total things all the yeah. weeks before and and every single one of them hit i should probably go make like a monty bet yeah, absolutely <laughs> but, so let's jump right into this uh i guess we'll do like we've been doing where you take the afc i'll take the nfc and and then we'll uh we'll debate the super bowl i think this year though it seems like everybody's talking about uh betting lines maybe we'll, we'll put out our our official heat check betting lines for the, uh, the the games. What do you think? Oh, there you go. Let's do it. I'll All right. make some up as we go. <laughs> exactly. So I gave so, you crap about your your Monty Demus line and said that right. it was it was way too much, and then it thoroughly was. Uh, I was incorrect on that take. So clearly, I'm a I'm a very reliable source for this. Yeah. Well, speaking of that game, uh, that one is our one game that's already been played, um, and I'll pull up our bracket here so everybody can see. But we've already got. Monty and uh and Demus play. Demus wins 37-28. So he's going to advance uh, as the 3 seed. Um so we'll go we'll go with uh the Browns Chargers. Who do you have in the Browns Chargers game? Yeah, Browns Chargers. I mean, you're back in the playoffs. You're playing great football, 14 and 3. Uh you have the offense clicking. You threw for, you know, 800 touchdowns with your rookie quarterback this season. Chubbs rolling and you're playing the folding chair. Um realistically, this one's not going to be close. Um, not to you know put too much helium in your head here, but I don't think anybody expects Meats to uh, to hang around too long in this one. I'm going to go with uh, Cleveland on the W, and I'm going to put the spread at you're favored by thirteen and a half. Okay, I like I like that, and hopefully it works out that way. I, I'm going to set it a little lower at six and a half. Um, that that Charger team, even though it's it's Meats, I think that Charger team's pretty good. And and I think he'll hang around. We've played pretty much close games all the time, so I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it'll be be right around one touchdown, maybe ten points, but I'd set it at six and a half. So if that if that plays out, then I move on and I'll play D Muse, um, and Prime would get the winner of the next game, the Bills and the Ravens. Who do you have in this one? Wow. So I mean, I think we all know who we're going to have in this one. Um, which, of course, is then going to set up a, a very entertaining second round. Um, but, yeah, I, I think Q for sure is going to get this one. I think the AFC first round is not nearly as exciting as the NFC first round. Um, but I do think the AFC second round is going to bring a lot of cool matchups. Um, Woods, I love you, my guy. You're great. You're awesome. Um, don't think you have much of a shot against Q. I know that he's coming in sliding a little bit. Um but at the end of the day, this is the reigning champ. This is the only two-time Simbardi winner of the cycle so far. Uh, it's Lamar Jackson. It's a very good defense. Um, I just think it's going to be way too much to overcome for Woods in this game, who just seems to make a habit of drawing the worst possible first-round matchup in every SML playoffs that he's in. Um, so we'll go Q. And what should we set this line at? I actually probably should have made yours smaller so that I can make this one bigger. I'm um, actually I'm actually going to say nine and a half on, on this one. I think they, they played I mean, a game earlier true. this year and kind of went back and forth. And I mm -hmm. think I think it may be about nine and a half. Q's kind of struggling right now. Yeah, he is struggling. And I mean, the one thing with Woods is that, you know, with Josh Allen, with Stephon Diggs, like, he can put up points in bunches. Yeah, that's for sure. So, uh See, I, I don't think he's going to have quite as many like lost possessions as Meats might have against your defense. So yeah, let's let's go nine and a half. Yeah, I think I think Q with the way he's he's playing right now, maybe he doesn't feel comfortable. And if he does get a lead, I don't think he's going to continue to be aggressive. He's going to try and ride it out. And and I think nine and a half is probably right for this one. Could be could be way off, and he could win by forty. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing with these. Uh, yeah, these, you never these know what you're going to get. Series. I think it's going to be about nine and a half, though. I don't think it's going to be the blowout everybody expects. 
No, but that right. would there you go. set a up motivation for QP. Exactly. And that would set up, like you said, a, a really big second round. Um, we'll start with it would be me against D Muse, and then it would be Prime against QP. Me, D Muse, who do you have? You and D Muse. Uh, I'm sticking with you. I think we're definitely going to get a matchup between the uh, the big three in the AFC in um in the AFC Championship game. I think that for D Muse's offense, what he wants to do, obviously we know he likes the drags. He wants to run it with Jacobs. That stuff's just not going to work all that well against your team. Uh, you've got an incredible front, so you're you're going to make running the ball difficult. You've got a very good user, um, so I I think it's just going to be an uphill battle for D Muse. As long as you can come out and, you know, kind of not blow a couple of early possessions just because Demuse can hold the ball for so long. Yep. But, uh, you know, I, I think this is going to be a close game. I think you're favored. Um, and I think this one, we will actually see the Demuse line I was expecting, where I'm only going to have you favored by, let's go with, let's go with three and a half. I think Demuse does keep this one close. That's exactly the number I was going to go with. The one thing I, th I think uh, that might play into my favor is I, I believe he's got Waller out. Um, he does, yep. So Waller, obviously a huge target for him, and I think that, that'll probably be the difference. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if Logan Thomas is going to quite fill the, the role of, of Darren Waller. <laughs> um, but then No, the, probably the, not. And I think Waller is honestly his biggest speed threat receiving. Yeah. Um, I know that Ridley is not a burner. Um, I, he has a rookie receiver. I don't remember. I can try and pull it up here, but I don't think he even has like that crazy speed uh, threat over the top. Lamar Wood, I think is yes, that's is the one. Rookie. All right, so that brings up our big, uh, big uh, prime QP matchup in the in the divisional round. Ravens Colts. Um, who would you have in this one? Now I know Prime took the first one. What do you think happens in uh, in the playoffs though? Yeah, Prime took the first one. He's he started chirping a little bit, saying he's, he's got Q figured out. Um, I'm not sure that figuring out Q is quite that easy, that one game does it. Um, I do think that a lot of the momentum from how Q plays against Woods is going to factor into this game. I yeah. think if he just barely gets by Woods, it's going to be hard not to to favor Prime in this one. But I think if he comes out and he looks like Vintage Q and you know he, he blows out Woods or he scores 40, which he's capable of, uh, then all of a sudden it you start forgetting about that you know kind of regular season slide. It's going to be a close game. No matter what, I'm going to go with QP favored, and I'm going to say by one point. <laughs> See, I was going to say the other way. I was going to say prime by 1.5. So uh, I, I think it is pretty much a toss-up, um, especially mm -hmm. you just don't know what which, which you're going to get. I mean, QP, he lost the last one uh, pretty handily. It, it wasn't that close of a game, but he also won like four straight against prime. So... Um, it's, yeah, it's tough to overlook that. And, you know, at some point Prime was going to get one. So whether or not the, the tide has turned and Prime's figured him out or QP, you know, just dropped one. Um, I think this game is probably a toss up and and I'm going to lean towards QP in this one. Just having Lamar Jackson is like that X factor that, that really makes a difference. Yeah, I, I think that's really the big thing is that in these games that are that close is, you know, a guy who can make that huge play. He had that one run against you. I know you you beat him. You know, relatively yep. handily a couple weeks ago. 75 yard run. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yep. I mean, he was spinning, he was dodging, he was ducking. I, I mean, a player like that where he can just take over a play and score on, you know, what looked like it was going to be a throwaway is just unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and it just takes one or two of those to to bring him right back in the game. So I think yep. it's going to be Q in a close one. Like I said, 1.5 for me, um, but I think it could go either way. So that'll make yeah. uh, AFC Championship of... Uh, AFC North teams with the Browns and the Ravens. Who do you got? Yeah, these these games are tough to call. Third matchup yeah. of the season. Uh, you guys split, if I'm correct. Yep. Um, I think he. Oh man, <laughs> you're both you're playing great football. I think you have the more positive momentum. But I think that if Q beats Prime, yeah. that's going to be you know totally irrelevant. I think he's going to be feeling himself. He's going to come out firing. Um, Oh, <laughs> I should have thought about this a little more. I'm going to I'm going to roll with the Ravens still. Um, and it, again, it's that Lamar factor. It's the Dobbins factor. Um, I think if, you know, if he gets past prime, he's going to be feeling himself. And uh, I, th I think I'm going to lean with him in another close game. I'm going to put a four point spread on that four and a half. 
Yeah, I like that. Um, the four and a half, it could probably be 10 and a half to 12 and a half either way. Uh, none of our yeah. games have been close all cycle. True. Um, we, we tend to, whoever gets up quick <laughs> ends up winning big. Um, but you brought up a good point that, you know, if he gets by Woods pretty easily and then he beats Prime, any lack of confidence he had coming into the playoffs is gone. Um, yeah. So that that won't play into my favor. Now, maybe the fact that last game went so poorly, his direction, um, just the way that, that he beat me the two or three prior, I think that, that kind of just gets out of his mind. We both know that, you know, the last game doesn't matter. Blowouts really haven't mattered because they just flip-flop back and forth to who's blowing out who. So I think yeah. with Lamar, that, that X factor, I think it gives him the advantage, and, and I think he goes to another Super Bowl. All right. So let's go over to the NFC. Now that we know the the uh, AFC representative is going to be the Ravens, and let's start. Somebody's got to knock this guy off. He's just showing up in too many Super Bowls. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we'll start with uh, the Giants and the Saints, and this is a kind of a throwback to last cycle. We saw quite a few Poly Future matchups, and you know Future got the best of him a couple times, and I'm going to say Future wins this one. Um, I'm going to set the. Uh, the line at future by two and a half. Um, I think he's, I think it's going to be close. Both guys like to control the ball, use their running backs. Um, but I think future future has been playing all right. He hasn't been, he hasn't been great since going, uh, going away from his quarterback and trying this. I think it's a first year guy now, a rookie again, Yeah, not the greatest, but all he's got to do is throw it to Kamara and, and Michael Thomas and, and I think he's he's kind of got Polly figured out from last cycle. So I'm going to go with future at, at about two and a half. What do you think? Yeah, that's you know that's an interesting call. I was saying last night just in in regular chat. This was actually my most anticipated game of the first yeah. round. Uh, I'm really excited to watch this one. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, and I thought that I might be alone in in picking future in this one, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I think that. Future's really sneaky. Um, Playing against him, he's not an easy matchup. He runs a phenomenal man coverage. Um, And for Pauly, that's probably the worst matchup uh, with Danny Dimes at quarterback. Um, If Future can kind of just contain Saquon a little bit, which his defensive line is very good. He's very good at stopping the run. Um, I think this is just a really bad matchup for Pauly. Um, So I'm going to take Future in this one. What did you set your line at? I put it at two and a half. I think it's going to be close. Um, yeah yeah future is not really like a blow you out kind of guy like yeah. you said he is going to control the clock so I, you know I, I would agree with that line you know two and a half three I feel like you'll know very early whether or not future is going to pull it out he seems to yeah seems to be kind of night and day when uh between his wins and his losses and if he comes out playing really well then he generally will, will do that throughout the whole game um, yeah his first drive will absolutely set the tone yeah so I got that means uh it's going to be future against Dan in the second round uh, the next two wild card round games, though, is uh, first up we have you against NYT. Um, not the best track record against NYT recently. Um, no, and you know Kyler Murray and that that Cardinal offense is really good. Uh, Rondale Moore, I think, is an X factor now. Damian Harris, superstar X factor. He's he's done a really good job developing that team. And then the defense with Isaiah Simmons, um, mm-hmm. we know what he can do with that, and his uh, his user Chandler Jones. Um, <laughs> but I think I, I saw something in chat that you said earlier this week or last week, I guess, about Jordan Love finally being back to, uh, uh, I guess, right at that uh, baseline. He's he's not not being hurt by morale anymore. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to make the difference. I think uh, especially having played Dan with, with Russell Wilson, you're getting quite a few escape artist quarterbacks under your belt. And I think uh, I think it's going to help you defend Kyler Murray this time. And let's face it, like like you said, like 15 different things have had to, to go right for you to get to this position. Um, I, I think it's almost destiny at this point. Dan said it, <laughs> a, a team of destiny, and I, I think you're going to get by the Cardinals. I'm going to set the over-under on this one at six and a half. I think it's going to be by a touchdown or more. Uh, I think you're going to win and upset the Cardinals. Yeah, I, I certainly hope so. Um, obviously, this is, you know, like you said, you listed off all the, the Cardinals weapons. This is not an easy offense to defend. Um, Kyler's a monster. Rondell Moore, on top of being crazy fast, also has route tech, um, which I've never actually seen somebody get just out of the blue. So that's uh, an incredible draw. Thankfully, the rest of his abilities 
um, he's gotten pretty screwed on. Um, <laughs> but this is uh, this is a very good team. I'm I'm definitely not looking forward to it. I was kind of more hoping for uh, for Danny Dimes in the first round, but hey, got to play who's on the schedule. Um, we're hoping for the team of destiny thing here. I'll, I'll get on board with picking myself at uh at six and a half. Yeah, and uh, so one of the other things that I, I forgot, you know, your your record and the fact that you had to, you know, have a, a bunch of things break your way was not due to gameplay. It was because you missed those games in the beginning and, and got behind the eight ball. So yeah, yeah, that it, hurt. It's not like you're struggling. Um, and any other time, if it was Panthers. Cardinals I don't think anybody would hesitate to say it's going to be the Panthers um, so six seed three seed you can throw the seeds out the window I think uh, I, I think some people maybe are sleeping on the Panthers because of how you you needed things to happen to get in but yeah realistically that's that's not because you were struggling you missed a bunch uh, yeah I, I definitely struggled my first like two or three games back yeah. I, I was not playing well uh, Russ was kicking in um, was definitely in my head quite a bit, but the past couple of weeks I've started to feel a little better. Obviously, Jordan Love with the morale thing, it's it's helped quite a bit having him back to his his regular baseline. I've felt pretty good throwing the football the last couple of weeks, so you know, hopefully we're we're kind of back and, and ready to roll, and we're gonna find out. It's gonna be a heck of a test in round one. Yeah, and let's find out who that round one's gonna be. It's uh, Lions and the Eagles dump against Clink. This one, this one's probably my uh, my matchup. I want to see the most. Because I, I really don't know which way to go here. Um, I'm going to favor Dump. I think he is playing a lot better. But he's talking a lot in chat. And when Dump talks a lot and starts guaranteeing things, uh, the only guarantee is that he usually loses. So I'm going to go Dump. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say things maybe maybe break his way this time. Clink on offense is just so up and down. You don't know what you're going to get if you're going to get four touchdowns or eight interceptions. Um and, and Dump is pretty consistent that he's going to put up points. Um, but I'm excited to see his his offense against Klink's defense. I think it's going to be, like I said, a close one, but I think Dump's going to pull it out. Yeah, these are two very fun teams because, like you said, I mean, Klink, Klink has the defense and his offense is um, uh, erratic, to put it nicely. Um, yeah. And Dump has the offense and, I mean, mostly just doesn't play on the defensive side of the ball. Um so it's, you know, two very extremes going against each other. Uh, the teams are pretty even at this point. Clink's done a very good job with uh, with those Lions. Um, big key in this one is going to be Clink's defensive line play. Um, if Dump can run the ball consistently with Miles Sanders, it's going to, you know, really hurt Clink's defense. Uh, and Clink's defensive line just is not quite as good as they probably need to be. Uh, if Clink is getting those early sheds and, and Dump is forced to go to the air, I think that plays into Clink's hands. Um, so we'll see. I'll, uh, you're the AFC guy, so I'll defer to you on this one and I'll, I'll say dump gets his, uh, gets his elusive first round win, but he's got to be careful with the talk. Yeah. Because, uh, if he moves on, that means he's playing, uh, you and the Panthers, uh, in that one, I'm going to set the spread at, I'm going to say seven and a half. I think it's a little more than a touchdown and I think you're going to win. Um, again, just, just too explosive on offense and then you play enough defense to where uh, you can beat him. I I don't know if, if Dump can put, a, put together that many wins in a row against quality opponents. You know if he beats Clink, he's going to be talking, and, and that's just going to oh, yeah. uh, double down on the chances of it not working out for him. So I'm going to say the Panthers end up beating the uh, the Eagles and possibly set up another Faz Dan matchup in, uh, in the NFC Championship. Yeah, I guess big shock on that one. But uh but yeah, I, I think that, you know, I would have to be favored in the game against Dump. Uh we played oh we didn't play this season because he got my AI. Yeah. Uh we played last season and uh and, and I bottled two up pretty good. Um so you know, it'll be the same thing. Miles Sanders will be the key in that game. Uh if he has to go to the air, it it just doesn't play all that great into his hands. Um so yeah, I, I think the dump hype will stop at uh stop at me just because if anything else, I'll just be the one who wants to wants to put the dagger in all right so that's going to uh make it dan against future um this one i don't think is going to be close i'm going to i'm going to go dan uh 15 and a half um i think he's going to pour it on i don't think he's going to be rusty um you know we talked about future being good but future also plays the same way pretty much every game and and if there's one thing dan can do is take away what you want to do and if you don't adapt you're going to be in trouble and 
and I think uh, future is going to be in trouble, and we're going to see Dan Faz NFC Championship. Yeah, I would probably bring the spread a little, little lower, a little closer, um, just because Future does play good defense. Um, he does play it pretty well against Dan, but at the end of the day, Future on offense is just not dynamic enough to beat yeah. Dan in a playoff game. Um, like you said, Dan, Dan knows. He knows what you're gonna do. He knows what you want to yep. do. He's gonna take away the Michael Thomas corners. Uh, he's gonna take away Kamara up the middle. Um, Future's gonna have a tough time scoring in this game. Dan probably. You know he's gonna get his lead. He's he's gonna you know kind of rag the clock. He's gonna gonna play his Dan ball. Um, so I I think the spread comes closer. I'll put it at uh at I'll put it at nine and a half. Um, but I I think this is Dan easy. He's just playing the best football in the NFC right now by a mile. Yeah, and so that's gonna bring us to the NFC Championship. You against Dan and and I'm gonna have to pick Dan for the sweep. Just I'm gonna have to agree with you. <laughs> Adam Russell Wilson has has changed his team completely. Um, it used to be you could you could figure out what he was going to do. And it was, I'm not going to say easy to stop because clearly I didn't stop it uh, when I played him. But you know what's coming. It was going to be the run the majority of the time and then just check it down to, to Pitts or, or the running back. But now, yep. even if you cover that, he's got a skate artist and Russell Wilson just takes off either up the middle, around the end. Um, yep. Much more dynamic quarterback than Teddy Bridgewater. And we've seen it just the way he's played this year. He's got the one seed. Um, I think he took both games from you. Um, and, and they weren't close. Yeah, he's he just looks like he's he's on another level right now with, with Russell Wilson. So I'm going to pick him by seven and a half. Uh, it'll probably be about a touchdown. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think, he, yeah, we, I think uh, he's going to be in control most of the game, especially on offense. Yeah, that's that's for sure the big thing. We you know play close games. We, we keep it close. I think our second game... I think the score might have been close. It even when I was playing, it never felt close. Yeah. Um. He kind of laughed me off the field this year. Um. So I, like you said, it's you know the difference from Russell, from you know from Bridgewater is is massive. The plays that used to be sacks or you know throwaways yeah. are now going for four, five, ten yards. You know he gets outside, everything's boxed, but then he throws that you know cross body laser. Uh, there's just nothing you can do about it. Um, so those plays are, are just detrimental trying to get him off the field. It's not been easy. Um, I don't know that I got him off the field on offense once in the two games that we yeah. played. Um, so yeah, he's playing the best football in the NFC. I think he's the easy favorite. Um, and, and I would have to agree with your spread as well. Probably ends up being, you know, a one score game, uh, unless I just go crazy trying to throw yeah. myself back into the game and throw 15 picks. Yeah. Those definitely possible. happen. Yeah. <laughs> So no surprise then, that makes the uh, Super Bowl escape artist versus escape artist. We've got Lamar Jackson and, and QP against Russell Wilson and Dan. I'm going to actually give this one to Dan, though. I think spread probably two and a half. Um, I think it's going to be close. The last time they played, QP won on a on a, a play at the end of the game where he, uh, he scored a touchdown really late. Uh, that was after Dan, I think, went for it or... Dan did something on like a fourth down or a third down and, and gave QP the ball back. And uh, I think Dan, Dan doesn't forget that he's mentioned in chat before that he, he remembers all his losses. And I'm sure that one he really remembers. It wasn't that long ago. And uh, I think he's going to want to get some revenge for it. And now he's got Russell Wilson instead of uh, Teddy Bridgewater. And I think he's got the weapons to do it. So I think it's going to be close, but I think Dan's going to edge it out and he's going to get his second Simbardi this, this cycle. Yeah, yeah, I think this is I think this is Dan season. Um, I just think you know right now he's the best team. I think he's you know playing the best. He really hasn't had any losses that I've looked at and been like, oh, you know there might be yeah. there might be an issue there. Um, you know even his loss against Prime, if he just you know scored, <laughs> we're probably yeah. talking about him beating Prime. Um, See, so, you know, I, I think he's just playing the best football right now. I, I think he's the favorite. Uh, I think in a game against him and Q, he's just going to be able to control the clock a little better. He's going to force Q into one mistake, and I think that's all it's going to take. Um, he's going to go from there, and, and I think he wins this one. I think it'll be close. Um, I forget exactly what you put as your spread, but I'd say four, four and a half. It sounds about um, right. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close game, but I think Dan will, will be in control, and I think he's going to going to win his second title. Yeah, I think so. the only thing that could hold him back, and I, and I don't know that it's going to make a difference, but he did lose uh, Deion Jones up until the Super Bowl. So 
Um, Kyle Pitts is probably only about two plays away yeah. from. Uh, yeah, I would going expect to see well. another Kyle Pitts injury just based off of every other season. Um, yep. So we'll we'll see, but I I think the Russell Wilson addition. I mean, the guy won Super Bowl without him. Uh, I don't think it's it's a stretch to say he's probably favored with him. But yeah, that's for sure. So that'll that'll do it for our playoff bracket, and now uh, we might as well move on to I know what your favorite segment is our. Uh, are folding chairs of, of pressure and who do you uh who do you want to start with uh we can so we can go we can go seven and up i'll start at the afc okay sounds good let's do that um so the charge which of course brings up. us to the the scales namesake uh our boy meets there you go. great place to start. seven seed say it yep. again <laughs> great place to start might as well start with yeah the exactly folding i mean i can't think of many better places to start um let's be honest he's against you uh i don't think anybody expects him to win uh, so it should be low, but he's him. So <laughs> it will be high um, just for the fact that he's meets. And I'm not sure I even remember the last time I saw him get out of the first round. Um, he really doesn't have any excuses with the team. They're very good. Sure, he's playing against yours, but, you know, the Chargers are, are no slouches. Um, I think all that adds up to we'll go with, uh, we'll go with a, a solid eight to start things off on the folding chair scale. See, I'm going to agree with the eight. and And let me take a... A book out of Prime's playbook. Let me tell you why. So, so Meats, he's the seven seed. He's, uh, he's an underdog. A lot of people put it at double digits. Um, I don't think anybody's really expecting him to win. But here's where the pressure comes in. I think right now is a perfect time for him to possibly shed that uh, folding chair label. Um, there's two guys. I think Grams and Doink have both mm -hmm. uh, really kind of catapulted themselves with their failures into that conversation for folding chair. And I think if meats can pull off the upset, there's, there's a legitimate argument to be made that it, it may not be him as the folding chair. Um, and, and I think we're going to discuss that a little more on first and goal tonight, but, uh, not, not Can't to give wait. too much of a spoiler alert. I think it's possible <laughs> he could shed that, uh, that nickname as much as he really wants to, but he's got a, he's got a win here and, and then he has a really good argument. So I, I think it's probably, yeah. Unfortunately I for like him, that. it's not a great matchup to uh to pass the torch. In, no, but but, uh, he but does it could have be a statement win. That would be a huge yeah, win. Yeah, it would be. And uh, with with the recent events of some teams and the way they finished the season, uh, that would be a, no no better time for him to shed it than now. So a big win could really go a long way to do that. Um, but also, Doink Grams, appreciate you boys. Thanks. Yeah. So the seventh seed in the NFC, we got future. I think. Uh, Future's probably only at about two. I don't even know if he knew he was in the playoffs until last night, um, which I guess technically he wasn't in the playoffs until last night. But um, true. I don't. I don't think there's a lot of pressure on Future. Um, he is playing Pauly, and I think maybe that, if anything, is going to add a little bit, just because I know last cycle there was a little back and forth there, um, and they played quite a few times in the playoffs. So I want to set his at like three. Yeah, I wasn't going to go any higher than a three. I think, uh, you know, like you said, the fact that he got in on the literal last game of the season um, means he probably wasn't uh, wasn't prepared too heavy for the playoff matchup here. Um, it's not a bad matchup for, you know, for round one, like we said. I th we, you know, kind of favored him in that game. Yeah. But I, I think the pressure is pretty low because even if he does move on, he's looking at Dan in round two, so... You know, we're all kind of looking at them kind of like St. Peter's like, OK, well, I guess they're a bad example because yeah. they won like what feels like 15 games. Yeah. But, you know, a typical, you know, teen seed in March Madness where it's like, oh, they got the one win. Now they're going to get kind of smacked. Yep. So uh, Monty was the sixth seed. Monty lost. I don't I don't know that there was a ton of pressure on him other than being the only uh, primer posse guy in uh, in the playoffs. Um, he, he was going up against D Muse. I, his pressure was probably at like a three, but he already lost. So let's move on to the NFC where it's uh, you're the sixth seed. And I don't know if, it, if there's much pressure for based on the opponents. I think it's more just because like we talked about it last season, the cycles winding down the opportunity to get Simbardis is winding down and especially yeah. multiple Simbardis. And I mean, Q's already got two. So yeah, uh, for you, to to come out on top with the Sambardis, you've already got to win, you know, pretty quick. You got four yeah. left, and if he's he's already we got him in the Super Bowl this season, and uh, 
So it's going to be tough to catch him. And I think that'll be where your pressure comes from. So I'll set it at like a seven or eight. Yeah, that's totally fair. I will I will say that I don't feel like there's any just because I've literally been preparing to be missing this playoffs. Um, so I'm just pretty pretty happy to be here and and be in the conversation as uh you know Matt as that sounds. Um, so I I feel like I'm going into games with pretty much a nothing. Uh, I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be here. Honestly, I played a pretty bad season most of the way. Um, so you know I I think I'm pretty low, but I can definitely agree with you know, a seven as far as, you know, the optics of the cycle. I, th- I think last cycle I was voted the the goat of the cycle. And if I want to do that again, I'm going to need to hustle. Yeah. It's, the window is starting to start and it's shrinking. It's, it's got to start to feel like it. And especially because on the other side, you've got prime also trying to get those multiple yep. Um So the five seed is QP on the, on the AFC side. What do you think about him? Yeah. So he's, you know, kind of favored in, in just about every game he's been playing. He's the only person right now with multiple Simbardis. Um He could put a stranglehold on the cycle if he gets three here before yeah. either me or Prime even gets one. Um, but as far as the actual gameplay himself, I don't think he's feeling any pressure. I think he's feeling pretty loose, uh, especially if he comes in, you know, like we said, he, he gets that big win in, in game one against Woods. Um, I'll put him... I'll put him at a five because I don't think he's really feeling much pressure, but I think there, you know, maybe a little bit of, you know, like I, like we just said, you know, he can really put a stranglehold on, on the, uh, the cycle conversation here. If, if he wins his third before anybody else gets two and, you know, me or prime even gets one. Yeah. I, I like the five. I, th- I think just for that reason that if he cares about, you know, locking up the most Simbardis for the cycle, mm-hmm. that, that kind of starts to put some pressure on knowing that he can, pretty much do that right now the odds of anyone winning all of the last three they could only right. tie him and uh so so i think that probably is uh maybe in his mind a little bit but probably sitting there with two already he's probably not too worried about it so five is probably right a pretty solid number now on the other hand dump it number five i've got him at a nine maybe a ten this is a guy that has not had the best playoff uh record if it weren't for Grams and uh, and Doink really really collapsing at the end of this season, you know, Dump could be a guy we would be talking about for maybe that that folding chair nickname. He's mm-hmm. he's had his playoff struggles that are uh, well documented, especially when he when he talks a lot, um, and he's already guaranteed a victory over Clink, and so <laughs> so that wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a a great look to uh, come out and and drop the first game. So I'm going to give him a, a nine out of ten on the on the folding chairs. Yeah, I think he's at he's at the full ten. I think he's uh, he's bursting at the seams on the uh, on the scale here. Um, you know, he's he's not one to win with a lot of grace. Uh, he's guaranteeing victories, um, which is a bold play for somebody who hasn't had a ton of playoff success. Um, if he wins that, and and if I win my game, or you know, if if the playoffs go as we predicted, he's going to have to beat Clink, and he's going to have to beat me, and then he's going to have to beat Dan. Um, so, I mean, pressure's, pressure's high. The games are going to be difficult. He does not really have any easy opponents. Uh, he talks so much. And I mean, right now we, we know the dump cycle, you know, he's due for his game where he just comes out and he gets smacked. Uh, so he's guaranteeing victories right around the time where it looks like he's probably going to fall apart. Uh, so, you know, I, I gotta go 10 on this one, I think. And I mean, let's be honest, since he talks so much when he wins, when he loses, we all just rip him relentlessly. That, that is true. Um, he does get ripped <laughs> so quite you, a bit. You go loses. down by three points and you know, you get the ball back. You're like, I can't throw a pick here. Cause if I lose, it's going to be ugly. And then you throw a pick. Yeah. And I, I think the, you know, he had his chance season one, he made the super bowl. Um, I don't think the blip was harder on anybody in the league than, than dump. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe prime. Cause you know, it happened when he left to, uh, left the league in Dan's hands for the draft. And, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, post blip has not been kind of dumb. He went from basically guaranteed NFC championship every year. Uh, yeah. even before the Super Bowl, I don't know if, if many people remember the little sound bites that prime had me and him do. He said he wasn't even feeling any pressure because he was going to be back there a bunch of times. Uh, and then the blip Rip. happened and <laughs> you and Dan both end up in, in the NFC and, uh, we haven't seen him. Uh, even make an NFC championship game since. So I think there's a lot of pressure on him and uh, we'll see how he he deals with it. Um, But that's going to move us to the four seed over on the AFC side. And that's going to be woods. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, it's got to be just about as low as it can get. Um, playing against Q in the first round, you know, he's he's got a good team that that he can win, but I don't think anybody expects him to. Um, and I mean, let's be honest, we've just kind of become accustomed to Woods in the first round playing against a probable Super Bowl <laughs> contender. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna throw Woods at at a two. Just because I'm sure in his mind he would really love to win one of these games, but we're all just kind of like, "Ah, oh, Woods, you did your best, man. We love you." Yeah, I don't think it's very high. Um, now, if he were to if he were to somehow get the three seed or the two seed and not have to play that five seed, I, I think the the pressure would be then skyrocket up because he'd finally get a chance um, against not the best wild card team. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree with the two. I think it's not very high. Uh, Clink, on the other hand, at four. I think it's a little higher for him, probably about a seven or eight, um, just just because he's gotten to the playoffs before. He's had some success before, um, but it's it's time to make that next jump. Um, yeah, he's had a ton of picks, a ton of money. Um, he's got a, a little bit of a cap penalty now, or uh, some tied up money from from Tyree Kill. Whoops. But but outside of that, he's he's had a blank slate to build this team for uh, what three seasons now. Yeah, this is the third season, so. Um, you know, you want to see him make that jump. And I think he wants to see himself make that jump as well. And uh, so I think there's a, a little bit of pressure on him. Yeah, there is. Um, you know, he's the guy kind of been tabbed as, you know, the person who can make that next jump, you know, who, who yeah. haven't we seen in the Super Bowl yet that, that could make it. And, and a lot of people end up picking him. Um, he's had success against a lot of teams in the NFC, but unfortunately for him, dump is not one of those teams. Yeah. Um, so I, I think with that first round matchup, you know, we saw him beat NYT last season. He's beaten Pauly. Um, he's on it. He's beaten Dan multiple times. Um, so, you know, this this is a guy who had a lot of possible first round matchups that would have favored him and he didn't get one. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that does add a little bit to the pressure. He's probably feeling a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll put him at a I'll put him at a seven. I don't think he's quite in meets territory yet, but I'll put him at a seven. All right, so number three in the AFC, Demus. Demus, 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 perennially underrated Demus. Um, I feel like the pressure is never high on him because, I mean, for whatever reason, we just don't ever seem to see him like super favored in his games. Um, he kind of mopped the floor with Monty last night, which would put him at round two with uh, with you. Um, which again is another game that he probably wouldn't be favored in. Um, so I'll put the pressure at, uh, I think in his mind, it's at a seven because I think he thinks that he's, you know, just under that, that big five tier to where, you know, he can make that Super Bowl. He can, he can really contend. I think the rest of the league probably puts him at a four. I'd agree with that. I think, and I think that's the exact reason uh, I would agree with that is because I think he, in his mind, and, you know, right, wrong or indifferent. I think he believes he is just outside that top tier of, of being considered, you know, a Super Bowl contender every season. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think, you know, he got the first playoff win. He gets past Monty. Now he's going to go in the second round. He gets to play me. And then third round will be either prime or QP. I yep. think, I think there's a lot of pressure that he's, he may be putting on himself to, to really show that he can, he can catapult to that level. Um, and he, and he would have to beat two teams to get to the Super Bowl uh, from the, the big five or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that is probably putting a lot of pressure on him, uh, you know, deserved or not. I think he's he's self-inflicting that pressure, and I'd, I'd put him at like yeah. a seven. Um, next up would be NYT at the three seed in the NFC. I think I've got his, his at like a seven or an eight. Um He's we've seen him in an NFC championship, but it was pre blip. Um, you know, everybody's given dump a lot of shit about, oh, well, you had the Cardinals, the, you know, pre blip. That's why you were so good. Whatever made your Super Bowl. They're a stacked team. NYT's got the same Cardinals team. He's got X factors everywhere. Um, you know, he got Ron you know, more to X factor. He got his running back. Now he's getting really shit on with most of the abilities, but, um, <laughs> you got Kyler Murray with, with your escape artist. I mean, Everything you want in a team, it's it's sitting there in uh, in Arizona, and I think I think he's got to have a little bit of pressure to to do something, at least you know win a couple games and get to a championship again, and maybe not the Simbardi this season, but 
but make a little noise after that uh that NFC championship earlier. Yeah, I think he's got to be high. Um, I think he's, I would honestly put him around a nine. We saw him go out in the first round last season against Clink. Yep. Um, another first round loss would be honestly kind of devastating. This is an unbelievable team. He's gotten dogged on, on abilities, but he does have the important ones. Um, route tech on Moore is unbelievable. It basically makes us, you just cannot play man against him. Um, and then with Kyler, you've got escape artist and you've got gunslinger. You can't ask for more. You could, you know, take the rest of the team and put recuperation on every single one of them. It doesn't really matter when you have those two. Um, that makes you extremely hard to defend. It makes you a formidable offense just with the two abilities. Um, to go out first round and back-to-back playoffs would be uh, would be pretty devastating for sure. Yeah. And I think beating you would be a, a big statement win for him. So Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he wins the first game, and I think the pressure drops dramatically. Um, but I think if he loses in the first game, it's it's going to compound. Yep. So that puts us next to the two seed. That'll be me at the two seed in the AFC. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what you would rate yourself. I don't think it's super high. Um, you are back in the playoffs, which I'm sure is a, is a nice relief. Um, I think the first game is the biggest one for you, uh, just because it, it would be you know, pretty brutal to miss the playoffs last season and, and then come in and, and lose to meets in round one when you finally get back. So I think your first round matchup is going to be your highest pressure. And then after that, I think it, it simmers quite a bit. So I'll put you at a, at a seven and a half for that. Yeah, that's uh, exactly where I'd put myself uh, <laughs> for the same reason, you know, missed the, the, uh, the playoffs last year, went out and drafted a, a rookie in back to back seasons, mm -hmm. uh, significantly better results this time. Um, but it it would be nice to uh to be able to advance in the playoffs and and maybe make a deep run and and to do that I'm going to have to get by meets first and that that Chargers team the defense looks really good so uh um I'm interested to see how my quarterback will play but it's you know already coming in a double digit favorite that's that's a lot of pressure and uh so so for that I think I I feel a little more pressure um but after that first round I think most of it goes away yeah, yeah, I think you just get over that first game and, and you're kind of good to go after that. But the first one, yeah, maybe maybe a little nerves. All right, so our other two seed is going to be Paulie on the NFC side, and I'm going to put his at like an eight. Um, <laughs> he was talking about paying off Doink to lose so he wouldn't have to face you in the first round. That's a lot of pressure. you got to win that first round game now. Um, you know, if, if that was the difference between you, you know, not not getting booted in the first round, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to win this. And let's face it, you're talking about a guy that's got over, what, 1,200, 1,300 uh, CFM games in his career. And, you know, a thousand of them, I think, before SML. But since then, still not a single Simbardi appearance in the SML. Um, I think there's a little bit of pressure on him to, to perform and, and move on in the uh, playoffs. Yeah, Paul is an interesting case. Um you know, this is kind of a guy we've seen it in the playoffs. He gets there, he loses, um, and it just kind of okay. That's you know, that's Pauly. Um, look at his record: thirteen and four, great season, six and zero in his division. Yeah. So you know, that's leaves him at seven and four, playing against everybody else. Um, you know, I think the first round. You know, he obviously he didn't want to play me. He was, you know, like you said, he's trying to bribe Doink. I uh, basically made it sound like, you know, playing anybody else was a guaranteed win. I don't know if that's what he was going for, but that's what it sounded like. Um, so I, I think, you know, I agree with you. I think it's high. I think it's at an eight. Um, it would be nice to see Polly get one of these wins and, and move on. Um, so, yeah, I think it's uh, I, th I think I'm sitting Polly at an eight on the uh, on the folding chairs. All right. I like it. So now we go one seeds. One seed in the AFC is going to be prime. What do you have, Matt? He's high. Um, he's real high. This is, you know, he's talked all season. I figured out Q. This is my time. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he was talking after he beat Dan. Uh, you know, he's feeling himself right now. He thinks this is his season. Uh, he doesn't have the title yet. He's the one seed. Um, everything's kind of lined up for him except for uh, except for the goalposts. Um so I, I think Prime's at a at a ten for this season. I think he's, you know, kind of primed him, <laughs> primed himself, uh, set himself up. I think he thinks this is uh, this is his year, and and he's going for it. Um, so if if he doesn't win it, I think it would be, 
you know, pretty uh, pretty rattling for him. So I'm going to throw him in a 10. Yeah, I'd agree. I think it's it's right at the top. Um, no Simbardis yet. Had the Chiefs, couldn't get a Simbardi. Um, now he's got the one seed. He's talked about he beat, you know, the other – what was he four and or three and one against the other big five or whatever? Yep. Uh, he was he was just a doinked field goal away from beating you two. Mm-hmm. So, um, like you said, he's he's definitely feeling himself and uh, he's coming in with the one seed. No Simbardis yet though, and and just like we said with you, you know, he he wants to win multiple, not one. And, yeah. Uh, so I I think there's a lot of pressure on him this this season to get one. And then our last one is going to be Dan. Over there at the one seed, uh, Dan, I'm not sure about. I I think there's pressure just because I think Dan, like I said, there's a reason he remembers all his losses. And it's because he doesn't like to lose, and yep. and so I think uh, I think it's probably high on him as well. Being the one seed, you know, he got a skate artist. Even he said how broken a skate artist is, and and how it's it's almost unfair. And uh, so it it would be tough to get a skate artist and then not win a soup win a uh, Simbardi. So I think it's it's probably high for him, but probably only about a seven or eight. Yeah, he's like he's a he's a sneaky high. Um, yeah. I was gonna say it's probably a six or a seven, maybe like a six and a half, just because. I mean, he is the one seed. He does have Wilson. I think it would just be kind of awkward to not win it when we're yeah. kind of all like, yeah, like th- this is his year. He's got Wilson. He can you know run around and and dodge pressure when he needs to. Um, so I, I think it would just be like weird if he didn't win this one. Um, but also like he does have one. Yeah. He's I, favored in just about every single game. Um, he doesn't have any like outside circumstances of, you know, oh, well, you know, this narrative will come up if he loses. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a weird situation he's in. I'll, I'll throw him at a six and a half just because I just think it would be weird if he doesn't win this one. Like he just should. Yeah. yeah I think the difference between him and prime is he's got one. So he doesn't. Yeah. He's not yep. too worried about that. I mean, obviously, I think he's also in that category of wanting multiple. Um, mm-hmm. The only spot where I think the pressure goes up is if he's in a one-score game for the Super Bowl and uh, he's, he's worried about that fat finger again because then that could that could really uh, be a prominent narrative going forward if he does it again. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Super Bowl on- and now, hopefully, <laughs> he, he listens to this and like, doesn't imagine that. This guy's got an issue. So, um, but I think that's... That's our folding chairs for this season. Uh, we're coming in just under an hour, so um, we are consistent. Yeah, we are pretty consistent with that. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a good playoffs. I'm excited for it. It should start. Oh, I guess it started last night, but nobody really knew. Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> Monty and Demius played. Demius, the the quietest three seed in the SML. Yep. But um, always. Yeah, uh, just about an hour from now, Browns Chargers will kick off. I think we have you and Dan on the call for that. Then we have the eight o'clock game is is you and MYT. That'll be myself and Mike. Nine o'clock is Eagles Lions. That's you and uh, Prime, I think. Yep. Ten ish, I guess, is going to be the Giants. <laughs> Whenever and, Future says you up. <laughs> yeah. Well, when when Future says you ready, then him and him and Polly will play. Right now, I think we have Doink on the call, but we don't have anybody uh, with him. So if anybody hears this, uh, somehow wants to join and. Here's it before the game starts. That'd be great. And then the last one that's still unscheduled is Ravens Bills sometime tonight. So maybe Easy we get enough. somebody on that. Maybe it gets played tonight. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not really sure. Um, ever since Prime said QP's scheduling is is wonderful. Uh, seems like we're we're on a downward trend now. Now he's not even Funny scheduling a playoff game. So uh, <laughs> less less compliments, Prime. Less compliments. <laughs> but. Uh, all right, guys. So that's been Heat Check. Uh, hopefully, uh, we we have a really good playoffs. I'm I'm excited for it. Yeah, looking forward. It's gonna be uh, gonna be a lot of fun as always. It's the best time of the year for the SML. Absolutely. So until uh, next season, this has been Heat Check.